Welcome, this is Zangler, the Tesla Semi Advocate. And um, today's video is the, the uh, second half to uh, the video, the previous video that showed this giant 250,000 pound uh, stamping press being delivered up Electric Avenue to Tesla's Giga Semi Nevada factory. This is the second part that answers the question of what are they going to do with it since there was no gantry crane uh, assembled outside as usual as we've seen in the past. And um, so we, the answer is they're going to back this thing, they're going to back this thing up. They're going to back that press up. And it's going to take a fine job to do that. Not a very good not a very good uh, homage to the hip hop song. But anyways, so in the time I finished that video, that, uh, that drone video of it, of this track, double tractor trailer rig weighing a total of 500,000 pounds coming up Electric Avenue and, and entering the, uh, getting close to the entrance to Giga Nevada. And so then I brought the drone back and I raced up to my normal drone location and this is what I got. They've already separated the back truck and they're starting to back this into the um, stamping press building, section G. And we know, for, and if you want to go back, and you can, you can go back as far as you want to where this, this factory was nothing but dirt. But um, you can also see after the main building was assembled, they started digging giant stamping pits and then building the foundations for these presses. And you can see that, that this is the second to last stamping press. I'm speculating that it will go in right over that, in this section of the building, the western, the southwestern section, and it'll uh, leave room, and they'll leave room for one more uh, stamping press, which is going to do to depart from Texas in one week and takes three weeks to get here. Something about this, um, this operation that I forgot to mention in the previous video is they burn through tires. They have to, they have to go on um, smaller highways and byways of the nation to get here. And he, the uh, lead driver told me that they um, often are running those tires on the shoulder in order to uh, not cross into the other lane. And they, um, you can see all the spare tires they're carrying, and apparently they've, they've basically run through virtually all of these tires on the trip here and had to replace them at least once. So here we go, backing in this stamping press into Section G, the stamping building. Um, I'll leave you to watch this for a little bit. Full disclosure, I've got this on 2X so that it only takes 10 minutes and 10 seconds of your time versus like 15 minutes originally. And um, it's just an amazing deal. Uh, the trailer has controls front and back. And if you notice the first, at least the first two sets of axles are, can be steered independently. And, um, and the same is true for the back. You'll see later what I mean. And uh, that bar that connects this, this uh, giant trailer must be an extremely expensive trailer. It's amazing what it does. But um, oh, my apologies for that. I have turned sound off, so we will get no more of those interu rude interruptions. Anyway. The, uh, there's a guy in the back controlling the back tires and uh, spoiler alert, they do not get it on the first try. The mere fact that they're trying this is amazing. But it's, again, uh, first principles. Instead of setting up the gantry crane on the outside and then putting it on the crawler and moving it inside and then resetting up the gantry crane on the inside, from this, for these, for this, and for the next 
stamping press, I think because of where they are relative to this door and relative to the building, they're able to do it this way. You'll notice that the, the um, beam connecting the trailer and the, and the truck is not fixed. And in a minute, you'll see it at a weird angle where the, um, the I mean, the, the, uh, the, the number of variables that they have to take into account here, the, uh, now they're pulling it back out. The, you notice the, uh, the tractor, the semis, trailers are going one way and the trailer, front two tires on the trailer were going the other way. And there's what I mean about this, the articulation of that, of that beam that connects the two. You imagine trying to back this, something like that up, down the, uh, well, so much for that promise. So there's a, there's a guy right there at the back. There's a little unit there where they control the trailer. There's one in the, uh, the back left and the front right. And that guy is going to control it in a minute. And they, they, they've got one guy standing by at the front right to control that. Like right now, he's, he's, I believe he's a changing the direction of the, uh, of the trailer axles in front. And this guy back there is controlling the, the direction of the trailer axles in back. They have to align it up perfectly so that it um, slides into the um, gantry crane opening. And if you go back a couple of videos, you can see um, that that process when they do, when they have the gantry crane outside. Much much easier as they're able to just drive through. So with the next delivery of a, the last stamping press from Giga Texas that is supposed to leave in about a week and arrive here about four weeks from now, three weeks of uh, travel time. It'll be interesting to see if they do this technique or if they have the uh, gantry crane set up outside. And I imagine that it's 100% dependent upon where it's going. But my, my visualization, my, my, my speculation is that this one is going into that large stamping press and at part of it and that the next one will go ne right next to it and they'll use the same technique and until then I'll leave you with this video and um, we will um, hope to get similar footage on the next on the next one here you can see it's almost in and um, yeah Thanks for joining, and um, I will continue to try to bring you Giga Semi drone coverage as long as it is relevant and as long as you, the viewer, are interested. So let me know. Let me know what you let, let me let me know if you have ideas. One viewer ha would like has put in a request for me to fly at night, like Joe does. I explained to him I'm a little bit gun shy, but I will um, I will do that. The reason I'm gun shy is uh, I did a twi uh, early morning um, flight and uh, ran my drone right into the mountain east, uh, just east of the eastern wall there, because I was on nine times zoom, so I thought I was much closer to the building, and I did not realize that obstacle detection does not work in low light. Now that I know that, I'll try to do better.
Hope you enjoy these final uh, shots, and um, I'll see you soon.